knowing that there are these four ways that we can cultivate and generate collective teacher efficacy across our teams and across our schools, we have identified and developed a five-part cycle called a collective efficacy cycle for teams to engage in so that they are creating those conditions for themselves to be involved in a mastery experience, to learn vicariously. There might be a bit of social persuasion and also to have those positive feelings as they are working in teams. How do we make that happen in our schools and on our PLC teams? So we begin by working with our teams, whether it's grade level, it's across a department, or perhaps it's people that come together that don't teach the same thing, but they have a common interest. And they identify a common challenge that's related to the need that has been observed in relation to student learning or well-being. So the team comes together and using data or using student work information, doesn't have to be summative, it could be looking at student work. So we begin by building our own knowledge and skills around that evidence-based strategy. That could include reading articles, perhaps it's a chapter of a book or it's an excerpt. We might be looking at different websites, but the idea being that we have some professional learning that is self and team driven. Right? We're directing where it is that we're learning this information from and how it is that we're going about learning it. Because we know from the research that it takes between 20 and 50 separate instances of practice in order to master a new strategy. So we need to give ourselves time to practice that strategy with students right before we start getting feedback on our implementation of that strategy. So while we're practicing that with students, we call that the safe practice aspect of the collective efficacy cycle. That gives us time to implement the strategy. Perhaps it's reciprocal teaching with students, right? That takes some time for us to get comfortable with it, for students to learn their own roles in how it is that they can direct conversations amongst themselves around a piece of text or literature. So that's the safe practice aspect. We get really good at the strategy. Next, it moves to opening up practice. And this is the time in our practice during the cycle that we invite other educators into our classrooms to see that strategy in action. We also observe in other classrooms. And the important part about opening up practice, it's that it's peer to peer, it's non-judgmental. We really work hard in advance of going to other people's classrooms or having people visit our classrooms to ensure that we know how to give evidence-based feedback that's based in observation that doesn't feel judgmental or hurtful or subjective. So that when we open up practice, we really are deprivatizing what was a historical practice of teachers going into their classrooms, closing the door, that's their kingdom, and no one sees what happens. We really want to open up our practices so that we can improve our own craft, and in so doing, students will learn more. All the while, throughout this cycle, we're collaboratively planning, we're checking in with each other, and we're monitoring student learning because we want to ensure that students are learning at high levels. And if they're not, that's feedback to me. That's feedback to our team. And we're at the point where we can make some adjustments because perhaps I didn't provide the right example or the right explanation and students don't understand. I don't want to wait till the end of the chapter or the unit or the state test to tell me that I should have intervened sooner. So we monitor students' progress, and then we adapt instruction. We, the professional educators, are able to adapt much more so than a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old. So we adapt instruction so that students are successful. And then finally, as the collective efficacy cycle is coming to a close, 
It had an introduction beginning with that common challenge and it comes to a close when we revisit that common challenge and we take stock of student learning because now we have evidence, we have artifacts of student learning and we're able to determine how effective were our efforts. And in most cases, when we are aligned, we're unified and we implement that evidence-based strategy really well over the course of six to eight weeks, students rise and exceed our expectations. And we can celebrate that, right? We have something that we can celebrate teachers' efforts because we have evidence of student learning. When the cycle comes to a close, Teachers, though, have the opportunity to determine if they want to continue that cycle a little bit longer because perhaps we need just a little bit more implementation for students to get to the levels that we want them to. Or perhaps we say, you know what, that worked really, really well and we're excited for that next common challenge. And then we begin a new collective efficacy cycle with a new common challenge. All the while, students are learning more and we are learning more too.